So let's hop right into it. Mom life. Francine Perry, <laughs> you found out you were pregnant in your early 40s or late 40s? Well, it was my second pregnancy. So it was a surprise pregnancy. So I was 40 at the time. Girl, and okay, in the moment, are you at home? Fill in the data for us. <laughs> paint, paint the picture for us. Were you at home and it was a home pregnancy test? Were you at the doctor? Because you weren't feeling well. You, and, and there was no possible way that you thought in, in any way you could be with child. Well, okay. The first thoughts that came about was, one, I traveled to the U.S. So there was a road trip that took place. Okay. And I slept the entire time. But I didn't really think much of it. My friends in the car were saying, oh, did you see that beautiful ice capade? I'm like, what ice capade? <laughs> So I slept like, I think it was like 10 or 12 hours going and then the whole time coming back. So I thought I was just, you know, tired, enjoying my sleep, having a nice car ride, whatever. Mm -hmm. But that was the first, that should have been my first signal. But anyway, it wasn't. So then I went to Jamaica for my in-law's wedding um, on the resort. And I was a little plump, you know, but I'm like, okay, maybe it's just the food. Maybe I'm just getting fat. So that should have been my second clue, but it wasn't, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. Life sends you little taps. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, okay. So, and at that time, I was missing my cycle. So, but I didn't tell my other half because, you know, he would have freaked out. Anyway, because I didn't think I would have been pregnant because I was on birth control for like ever since I could remember. And then I had gotten off because my doctor was saying, you know, you need to figure out what you're going to do because you can't be on these things for so long the whole shebang so that's what I did I was taking that little window to figure out what my next steps were and within that time boom so when I came back I'm like you know let me just go to the doctor and see what's happening with me so they did the p test and all that and it was so yeah <laughs> that's how I found out. <laughs> so the doctor comes in and says you're pregnant and your first thought is I wasn't really that surprised I don't know why but I was like okay now what do I do <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah well I guess the next hurdle would have been you know telling and his reaction was um surprisingly he was okay with it I mean he didn't plan on having another one right right you know because <laughs> it because they I mean it's not like they're expensive in anything it's Really? <laughs> <laughs> but he was like there was no other option than to you know carry the child so like wow oh my mm -hmm. okay so this is this is where we are at 40 mm -hmm. okay okay well now i'm gonna be 43 my birthday's in a couple of days so so how what was the pregnancy like um because they say because they say everyone is different it was pretty good actually i was kind of nervous in the beginning because my first child she was premature okay. so automatically I was put on the high risk category so I had doctor's appointment like I think every week they were drawing blood for me now I'm like deathly afraid of needles because <laughs> I'm like if I get one more needle in me I'm gonna like I don't know what I'm gonna do yeah so yeah because yeah. you, you start feeling more like a more like a lab rep in an experiment than <laughs> yeah yeah I had appointment after appointment and everything went well. I even went past my due date. So that was good. I had to be induced. So I was really happy about that. So, but I went through it pretty smooth. I was feeling good, healthy. My hair grew so long, but obviously that didn't last long because I have none. <laughs> <laughs> I have so, none left now. <laughs> so in those, in those first nine months, tell me about an experience in where you had to strengthen your courage muscle. Um, I think it was the end when I was about to give birth. Mm -hmm. It was very long. It was painful. Because I wanted to go the natural way. You know, you hear the dream stories. Oh, I did <laughs> the natural way. So I'm like, I can do this. Let me do this. But girl, after like the first, second, third contractions, I was mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe I'm not going to do this after all. So I ended up having um, some epidurals. So it was really, really challenging because the epidurals didn't seem to work. Mm -hmm. 
okay. how they were supposed to. So I had to get repeated, repeated, repeated epidurals. And at oh. one, yeah, because <laughs> at one point I thought I was I wouldn't be able to walk because my back was just like going. I said I can't do this anymore. But my what? doctor. Sh- Mm-hmm. What is the difference? What is the age difference between the oldest child and the youngest? Oh, you, do you really want to know? Yeah, yeah. Because you, <laughs> she's twenty-four. Okay, because I don't, I don't see another child in the timeline. She's there. Her birthday. No, no, is- no, 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 no. What I mean is like ten and under, fifteen and under. Oh, neither did I. Neither, <laughs> neither did I. <laughs> So I knew that there 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 had to be a uh, a story there with the with the age differences because when I when I scroll the timeline, I all I see is prin- the little princess. Yeah. So. Yeah, no one was expecting it, but you know, she's so, here. So with the repeat, the repeat of the early morning feedings, the repeat of the. Oh yeah. You know, nearing the end of my pregnancy, I started to wake up at like 2 a.m. And then I was complaining to my doctor. I'm like, I can't sleep. Why am I getting up? She's like, oh, honey, your body is just preparing you for what's to come. So, you know, Mother Nature is so awesome. She actually started waking me up at 2 in the morning. So I'd be up like all bright and cheery in the kitchen doing whatever (laughs) (laughs) at 2 a.m. So, but yeah, it's not easy you know the early morning feeds and she's gonna be three soon and she Mm -hmm. still wakes up for her milky like mommy my milky i'm like and what and what what time (laughs) uh, what what uh, what hour is this um it varies sometimes she'll sleep through the night and then other times she'll wake up maybe like four okay so now four thirty okay so now (laughs) ah no ma'am no yeah so let's get into mom life on the daily. Well, and, I work full time, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so run run me through an average day for you. Okay, an average day is I myself I wake up at five fifteen because I got my full time job I have to get to first seven. So her dad's usually home at that time. He has a different schedule, so he will be with her. She wakes up around eight o'clock to get ready to go to her daycare and then she calls me at like 8 15 to tell me she's up she's brushing her teeth she's using potty whatever mm-hmm. and then <laughs> and then I finish at three so I get home and then usually within that window before I pick her up I take my shower I'll have my little, nice little java I'll have my little self time I usually pick her up around four thirty, five ish, and then she gets home, and it's a whole nother. Now, how, how how important is that? Those moments for you, that self time. Oh God, it's it's so important. Cause <laughs> <laughs> if I don't take a shower before she gets in, sometimes that's not even in my daily. Like you know, I'm being honest; it's not part of my daily life. <laughs> I'd be too tired to even go to the bathroom. And then she'd be like, mommy, give me a bath. Okay. Well, I didn't even have a bath yet, you know? Now, tell, tell moms out there, especially new moms, tell them why there's nothing wrong with that. That there's some part of the day that they have to carve out for themselves, even if it's while the baby is sleeping. Why is that so important to themselves? It's important because it's for <laughs> your sanity, for you to be a better person, to yourself and to the child, because if you don't have that time to yourself, sometimes you can't even function. You can't think. And then you tend to have like outbursts. It's not because you're angry at the kid, but it's just because you needed that little time for yourself to just Mm -hmm. even like get your thoughts together. So yeah, I think that's why it's really important. You don't want to put that bad energy onto the child. So it's good for you to get into that space. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm clean. I feel much better. I don't need to be dressed up, but at least I took a shower, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, let's look at the flip side of that for just one second. Because recognize that if you're easily agitated, if you're 
you know, smarting off or being very short with mm-hmm. the people with the people in your life. That could largely be because you are not taking that self care time for yourself. Absolutely. And I find that I've noticed that like if I'm not if I've been in the house all day and I'm not even dressed up or just a little bit, mm-hmm. no one can talk to me. Like I'm not in the mood, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So it makes a huge difference. And then how easier, like, like, tell me the differences between when you get that time and you go and pick up your daughter versus when you don't get that time and you go and pick up your daughter. Uh, when I do get that time and then she's asking for favors, I'm more up to doing whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. But if I don't have that time, I'll be all grumpy. And she'll be like, mommy, I love you. Mommy, kiss. I'll be like, okay. You know, I got to snap out of it. So I recognize that I didn't get that time for myself. And she, I, and she recognizes it too. Yeah. Yeah. But I still have to be, you know, that for her. Regardless. Now, let's move into... I saw the... Uh, <laughs> turn left, turn right. Yes, I am guilty. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can give us a little bit about that. About our hamburger what, runs? W- yes. Why is it? Oh, first, first of all, <laughs> first of all, give me the story behind the post. And then tell me how you, I guess, reject all of the mom guilt in making those runs. Well, first of all, she's a very, very picky eater. So at one point, she did like the home cooked chicken. But then I don't know at what point she decided that it was yucky. So she she stopped eating that. So I'm not going to force her to like eat things that she doesn't like. Because it'll come back around. Exactly. And then she's got on this hamburger train. I don't even know how it started. (laughs) But so far, it's been months and it hasn't come to an end yet. We, every day after I pick her up, as soon as she gets in her seat, okay, get burger. That will be like the whole conversation, the whole entire ride. And she knows where the burger spot is. We can't go to McDonald's. We can't go to Burger King. We have to go to Wendy's. If I take her to any of the other spots, she won't eat. So I don't know what it is about going to Wendy's and their burger. Mm-hmm. It's just to get that burger. It's just a bun and the bread. So there's really nothing to it. It's a plain burger, but she likes, she eats it. So I'm like, if she's going to eat something for the day, she can have it. Whatever, her, some, whatever yeah. this phase is that she's yeah, going through. Exactly. At it's, some point, she's going to be done with it. Yeah, It's easier to go through it. And, and actually, it will help those around her learn her as she gets older. Exactly. What's a phase and what's not? Because like you said, it was the chicken for a while. Mm-hmm. And now she says the chicken is yucky. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ew, you're eating chicken? Yucky. I'm like, okay, and, you don't have to eat it. <laughs> and now she wants the burger. But, but why the post? Why the yes, I'm guilty post, but I'm not ashamed? Because people tend to think you're a bad mom if you're not giving them fruits and vegetables and the whole, you know, the balanced meal. So I'm not ashamed to say, like, she has burgers every day if she wants. I mean, I don't, she's healthy. She's happy. She's not giving any problems. So why not? Now, what, what brings you to that point? How do you deal with that? Because, you know, there are some moms that would fall apart. Mm-hmm. And be like, oh, oh, my God, I can't. There's no way I could possibly do that. <laughs> help them not to have that meltdown I mean every parent is not going to be the same don't compare yourself to other people don't follow the perfect mothers like I remember I used to see posts on this platform where their kid was sleeping in the night through the night at three months and I'm like oh my god what am I doing wrong she's still waking up and she's 12 months like so I re- I felt really bad until one day I'm like you know what it's fine. I think I did make a post about it and someone in the comments said it's okay. They'll sleep when they sleep. Like <laughs> you can't make them sleep through the night until they're ready to sleep through the night. So I think that just 
going with the flow, mm -hmm. allowing them to be themselves, they'll come around to whatever it is that they like when they're ready uh, and not pushing them. They're better little humans when you just let them be, find themselves. Now, do you have a mom support group? Even, even, I, if it's, even if it's not some, something that is formal that you go to when you sit down in a circle. I mean, even if it's just a sister or a neighbor or a play date somewhere. You where... know, because of COVID, I haven't really been able to partake in any type of group setting, but I'd mm -hmm. love to find something in my area, <laughs> you know. So, Prior so how... to COVID, we used to do the mom groups okay. um, on a regular, but then that all got shut down. How, how often did you meet? Once a week. And... Um... First but she all, was she was really young then, so this wasn't how, even a, a topic. <laughs> how did how did you find them? I found them on Facebook. Okay, so that'll give moms the, uh, some ideas of yeah. where they can go to find uh, mom groups there's, in the area. Yeah. And how kind of groups there? Yeah. How was it supportive to you? Um, because it was more like therapeutic, because we went on walks in the park and. We talked about, you know, life and how we're doing and what the babies are doing at a certain phase. So, you know, we got to know each other and what to expect, sort of. But we were still able to express ourselves and what we're going through and support each other in that sense. Collectively in the group, what would you say was the number one issue? I would say that the number one issue was there, there were majority new mothers. So they didn't really know much about parenting. They were all learning <laughs> at the same time. And I felt like I was a part of it too, because technically I was a new mom again. <laughs> yeah, you <were. laughs> yes, yeah. You, yes, you were. Yeah. So how does your sister feel about having the, the younger sister? Did she take the surprise or was it like, mm, I kind of, that kind of felt or I kind of knew? Um, she's okay with it. I mean, at first, well, she's 24, so... Mm -hmm. Think about it. How much time does she really have to? Because she's doing her own thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to expect her to be like a babysitter or anything like that. But they really enjoy each other. She treats her like it's like her little doll. You know? Now, it, let's get into that a little bit more. Why wouldn't you expect her to be a babysitter? Um, because she has her own life. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring the baby into the world to expect her to be my babysitter. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect anything. If I get things, like if people help me out, that's a bonus as far as that goes. But I don't put any type of pressure on her to, you know, watch, watch her or do anything extra. As a mom of a toddler in the pandemic, what's your number one concern about your child's socialization? Oh, God. She... I'm so happy she started daycare because in the beginning she was just home. It was just her grandparents, myself, just all adults she was seeing. So, and then she was terrified of anybody who came for like visit in a mask. Oh. Yeah. So even to this day, if anyone comes to the house and they're in a mask, she will cry like crazy. Once they take it off, she's fine. So in that sense, it was kind of scary. Because I'm like, if this pandemic goes on any longer, I don't know. Her social skills are going to be, you know, different. But in school, she's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I imagine so. Because she's probably ecstatic now and excited to be around people her own, her own size. <laughs> yeah, although it's a task getting her there in the morning. But, you know, we have to tell her that we're going shopping. That's you all lie to the baby. That I gotta have to. Oh, if I lie. say you're going, if I say you're going you're to lie. school, she's not going. <laughs> she said, "Mommy, you going shopping at Walmart?" <laughs> okay, so when that burns out, and she no longer, <laughs> <laughs> we're not there yet. So let's just <laughs> now. Why? Why is it such a difficulty? She's enjoy. She enjoys herself so much. She does. I get. I don't know. Like it's the point of getting her there. Once she's there, she's okay. But if she knows she's going there, I guess it's kind of like she likes being home. Mm -hmm. She'd rather be home than to go there. 
Did she start going to daycare at a at, as a baby at a very early age or no? How old was her when she, how old was she when she first um, started September going? September one and some months, like a year and did, a half. I think. Did you experience any separation anxiety? Oh yeah, really? Even with the second one? Because we were together like the whole pandemic, we didn't go anywhere much, and since she was born. We haven't been separated, so it was hard. I'm not gonna lie. And how did you deal with that? Like, tell, tell, tell young moms out <laughs> there, because the pandemic is coming to an end, and I, slowly yeah. the offices are beginning to to open up, and some of these moms are gonna have to let go. Mm -hmm. How how do they let go? It's it's not going to be easy because I had days where I would drop her off and I'm crying in the car going to work. So it was like I knew this was the situation, but when you're actually doing it, mm -hmm. it's it's not easy. It's not fun. So it just takes time. It's not going to be like an easy, quick, get over it situation, but eventually you'll get used to it, especially if you know that she's in a safe environment that she really enjoys as the weeks go by you'll get the hang of it but right away no there's gonna be a few tears shed yep so your advice is to just sit in it yeah and 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 experience it have yeah. the emotion mm -hmm. and then pick yourself up and going about your day yeah go and through the whole crying go through the you know the tears don't try to hold them back because then Maybe one day you'll break down in front of the child. Do it when, after you drop them off, just do it in the car, have your moment, and then go on about whatever else you have to do. Was there any, any self-talk or anything that you had to tell yourself on a regular basis once you let her start going to daycare? Well, I, in the car, I'd be like, okay, you, you can do this. She's going to be fine. You got this. Like, literally, I would be like telling myself these things like, she's okay. You're a good parent. You're not bad for dropping her to this place. You're you're okay. So as moms can say that those same same things to themselves. Mm -hmm. doesn't they... make, it doesn't make you a bad parent. It's just, you know, life and something that you have to do. When you drop your child off, mm -hmm. you get back to your car. Have your moment. <laughs> do whatever you have to do. Breathe slow. Mm -hmm. And tell yourself, you're not a bad mom. Mm -hmm. This is a natural progression of life. Mm -hmm. You will be okay. Yep. You got this. Your child is okay. And your baby will be okay. Yep. They're in good hands. And you'll see them in a little while. Is, uh, is there anything or any advice you would like to give to the moms out there? Oh, I got double Francine's on. Hey, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just don't let anyone tell you, no matter what age you are, you're having a baby. Don't let anyone tell you that you're too old or you're too young or why are you doing this again? You're fine. Just do your own thing. Be your own person. You'll be okay. Like the main thing I got was, oh, such a big age gap. What are you going to, what are you doing? Like, I'm doing parenthood. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Say that again. I'm doing parenthood. I'm fine. <laughs> what? People actually approached you and made that comment to you out loud? I get it all the time. Really? Yeah. Did, I had a video that said um, people keep asking why I had another child. What the, why the big age app or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made a video about that. Yeah, because it, that was it wasn't something you planned. No, but even it was, if it was, like none of your it, it was it was a, it was a. But I mean, a lot of people are fearful. They feel as if they must matriculate the days of their life and create this perfect picture because that's what they think everybody else is living based on what they see on social media. Exactly. But going through the natural progression of life is not a horrible thing. No, it's not. And everything happens for a reason. You never know why you had a child young. You never know why you're having it at an older age. Like, everything for a reason. 
So you were chosen at that time to be the princess's mommy. And I mean, I can't see anything terrible about that. It, it <laughs> this perfect plan, girl. Everybody looking at these social media lives, they think that oh, I know. everything has to follow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for the interview. No problem. Thank you for sharing <laughs> your our methods of developing courage. Um, one, for the age gap. Two, for uh, finding out you were pregnant at 40. And then three, for actually letting go. Um, the ways that moms can let go when it's time for the baby to go to, whether it's the daycare or to school. And... Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. You, you just have to do what you feel is the right. There's going to be a million different advice from everyone, but just do what you know you feel inside. Okay. Would you like everybody to follow you on your platform and give your social media handles or where they, you, they could find you? Oh, you can find me at Francine Mom Life. That's on Instagram. So that's at Francine Mom Life. It's the right, same thanks. on other platforms if you, you're on other places. Twitter, Facebook. And TikTok. And TikTok. TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. All right. <laughs> thanks, Francine. Enjoy your Sunday. All right. You too.